Hi guys, welcome to podcast 23 of Let's Say Wise MBBS and today we are going to talk about various malpresentations, malpositions, okay? So we will talk about breach presentation, transverse lie and then about occipital posterior position, uh, then face presentation, brow presentation, okay? All this abnormal labor. We have seen everything about normal labor. Now let's start with breach, breach presentation. So there are mainly three types of breach, frank breach, complete breach and incomplete breach. Okay. So in frank breach and complete breach, there is flexion of thigh. Okay. Thigh is flexed. But if the knee is extended, then we call it frank breach. If the knee is flexed, then we call it complete breach. Okay. And in incomplete breach, thigh is extended. Okay. And now depending on whether knee is flexed or extended uh, if the knee is flexed then the presentation is called knee presentation and if the knee is extended the presentation is called footling presentation okay the three types frank complete and incomplete so the most the highest chances for cord prolapse is in footling presentation in incomplete breach okay because there is lot of space for cord to prolapse to the cervix okay so that is the most common or uh, knee presentation sorry footling presentation has maximum chances of cord prolapse and for that we need to go for c-section okay the least chance of cord prolapse is in frank breach okay right now how do we manage this breach presentation so if the female comes before uh, the onset of active labor so at 36 weeks we can do external cephalic version so what is it externally we rotate the fetus we try to rotate the fetus and bring it back in the cephalic presentation try to bring it in the cephalic presentation okay so this is a simple opd procedure no anesthesia is required anything and uh, so there are various methods uh, various conditions in which this ecv cannot be done or ecv is contraindicated what are those if the breach is incomplete breach like foot link presentation or knee presentation then if it is stargazer breach that is the neck is extended okay the head is extended then if it is preterm or post term if placenta previa is present if there is oligohydromnios in all these conditions ecv is generally contraindicated we do not go for ecv and if we are not able to do ecv and bring the fetus in the cephalic position cephalic presentation then we go with c-section okay so basic management is if breach delivery uh, breach, breach presentation comes to you try to do ecv external cephalic version okay uh, it is a opd procedure you can try it two times okay if uh, if the patient comes today you try ecv if it does not happen or if the fetus goes into distress then you tell her to go home come back tomorrow or later in uh, two three days and when she comes again again try ecv if it again does not if the presentation again does not change to cephalic presentation then you need to go for c-section so two two cases where you need to go for c-section if ecv is not successful or if ecv is contraindicated okay in these conditions you need to go for c-section in other conditions we can go for assisted delivery okay assisted delivery is with the help of uh, forceps so uh, what we do is in assisted delivery is that we let the fetus come out till the umbilicus so the buttocks area come out and umbilicus comes out then we uh, use this assisted delivery okay in assisted delivery induction and augmentation of labor is usually avoided okay so these are the uh, management assisted delivery and c-section now let's talk about some maneuvers uh, which are used in bridge deli bridge pre uh, delivery i would uh, recommend you to uh, see the pictures along with what i say so first listen what I'm saying and then go back and see the images of those maneuvers. Okay. So first is Pinard's maneuver. In Pinard's maneuver, the obstetrician puts her finger in the cervix and uh, this is mainly done in frank breach. So what we do is we put a pressure or yeah, we put a pressure on the popliteal fossa. So when we do that, the knee is flexed and once the knee is flexed, we can remove the leg out okay this is pinard's maneuver now the second one is lovesets maneuver 
so this is done when the uh, leg and the umbilic till the the fetus has been delivered till the umbilicus then we rotate the fetus 180 degrees by 180 degrees to uh, deliver the shoulders okay and we can also rotate 180 degree more to deliver the extended arms this is lovesets maneuver next is burns marshall maneuver so here the fetus is the back of the fetus is towards the pubis pubic symphysis of mother okay so and face is towards the sacrum so in burns marshall what we do is we hold the leg of the baby and rotate the leg towards the mother's abdomen okay it's like a swing we we swing the uh, leg hold the leg and swing in the long arc towards the abdomen but here the fetus the back of the fetus is facing the mother's pubis the other maneuver which is prag prag maneuver is similar to burns marshall just that the position of the fetus is the uh, the orientation of the fetus is exactly opposite the back is facing the sacrum okay in burns marshall the back was facing the pubis back was towards the pubis in prag the back is facing posterior so it's dors dorso posterior position in prag maneuver okay now the next maneuver is uh, mauricio smelly fight maneuver okay so here what we do is we put our right hand and uh, we put pressure on the malar bones on the jaw on the jaw okay and by the left hand the left hand uh, with the help of index and ring finger we give shoulder traction and with the middle finger we we try to flex the occiput okay so right hand puts pressure on malar bones and left hand gives shoulder traction and puts the pressure on occiput okay this is mauricio smelly fight maneuver there is other, another maneuver which is modified mauricio smelly fight here what we do is we uh, uh, uh just a correction in mauricio smelly fight we give uh, we give pressure or we give flexion on the jaw and in modified mauricio smelly fight we uh, put the pressure on malar malar bones okay so malar flexion is in modified and this modified mauricio smelly fight maneuver is most commonly performed okay then uh, next we have is pipe with the help of piper forcep we can deliver or the last like last last mechanism last method is zavanelli where if it's not if it's not possible to vaginally deliver the pre, the breech presentation then we put the fetus inside the uterus and then we go for c section right now let's see some cases and let's see what what will be the management or how will we deliver the baby okay so first a case is that if the patient is primary and uh, she comes in breech delivery and she is in active labor what should we do we go for c section okay if the mother is primary and she is having breech presentation or multi with breech presentation but not in active labor then we do ecv okay if the mother is multi and she is breech but and she comes in active labor then we can go for vaginal delivery if she was primary and comes in active labor with breech we go for uh, c section and if she is multi with breech in active labor we try vaginal delivery okay if the fetus is macrosomic or is in preterm labor with breech then we obviously go for c section okay star gazing breech also we go for c section okay if it's previous lscs and now presents with breech then also we go for c section okay so this was about breech delivery now let's talk about transverse presentation transverse lie sorry so the most common cause of transverse lie is prematurity and then we have other causes like if the pelvis is platypeloid which is flat shaped then we can have transverse lie management here is uh, here also we can try ecv if the patient comes before active labor uh, but we stop this ecv if if in case we see that fetal heart rate is dropping or there are signs of uh, the cord entanglement around the fetus neck okay and if e ecv is not successful we go for c section right now coming to the next one which is uh, occipital posterior position so uh, in in 10% of patients uh, it, there can be occipital posterior positions and in occipital posterior we have three positions right occipital posterior 
direct occipital posterior and left occipital posterior okay so right occipital posterior is the most common amongst all three of them so what how do we manage this occipital posterior position we have seen in the previous podcast that we wait and watch okay why do we wait and watch because in 90% of cases right occipital posterior if the uh, occiput is in the right posterior area then it rotates by 3/8 of a circle and it comes in direct occipital anterior position okay so 90% cases it itself like it it happens on its own so then we can go for vaginal delivery so the main management is wait and watch okay but sometimes when the head is rotating from first see it will be first in right occipital posterior right then it will come into right occipital transverse then right occipital anterior and then direct occipital anterior so this is 3/8 of a circle but while while traveling or while rotating from by 3/8 of a circle uh, when it comes from right occipital posterior position to right occipital transverse there is if there are prominent ischial spines then the further rotation may get arrested and this is called deep transverse arrest and as we have seen deep transverse arrest is common in android pelvis so if there is deep transverse arrest then we need to go for c section okay but otherwise we can wait and watch and 90% of the delivery will happen normally okay normally we can say rather normally we can say that it will happen vaginally okay because in normal labor the definition was it should be there should be no undue prolongation but here there is prolongation so we cannot exactly call it normal labor but normal delivery but still vaginal delivery is possible in 90% of cases of occipital posterior position okay now sometimes instead of rotating anteriorly and coming in direct occipital anterior position the head can rotate posteriorly and go in direct occipital posterior position okay so here we need to see whether the pelvis is anthropoid type or any other type of pelvis if it is anthropoid type of pelvis then we can still try vaginal delivery in direct occipital posterior position but if it's any other types of any other type of pelvis then we need to go for c section in direct occipital posterior position okay because in other pelvis there can be deep sacral arrest so if there is this deep sacral arrest then we need to go for c section let's talk about last two presentation that is face presentation and brow presentation so in the face presentation the neck is uh, extended the head is extended completely so uh, the engaging diameter has a diameter of 9.5 cm okay so which is the engaging diameter here it is submento bregmatic okay and it it measures 9.5 cm so so again uh, in face presentation there can be mento anterior position or mento posterior position right because here the uh, denominator is mentum so it can be mento anterior or mento posterior if it is mento anterior then we we can go for vaginal delivery but if the mentum is facing posteriorly and sacrum is towards the pubis then vaginal delivery is not possible and we need to go for c section okay so face presentation mento anterior position go for vaginal delivery mento posterior position go for c section let's talk about last presentation that is brow presentation in brow presentation the engaging diameter is mento vertical which is 14 cm there is no pelvic diameter which measures 14 cm so here vaginal delivery is not possible we need to go for c section right so uh, we have seen most of the we have covered most of the uh, abnormal labor abnormal types of labor so that's it for today's podcast we'll meet in tomorrow's podcast till then enjoy and keep studying bye bye